The idea started in 2018 when I made this very dumb paper robot. It could only move straight without any directioning, so it was totally useless. But behind this experiment I had a more elegant concept, because by adding another coil it could in theory act as a second leg. Attracting one magnet to the coil while repelling the other should result in a turning motion. While if we repel both magnets, the robot should move forward. Keep in mind that this is not the best methodology to make a robot work because ideally we would have more axes of motion. But here we're trying to look at the simplest solution. And the results were promising, but given that it was entirely made out of paper, I couldn't test if it could actually work or not. I mean, it needed to be self-powered with onboard electronics to be even feasible. That's when I started considering replacing the paper with a flexible PCB and have all the electronics mounted on board. For this first prototype I tried to keep the electronics simple, so that I could keep the robot light and focus on testing the walking technique. In fact, the schematics only consisted from a BLE integrated microcontroller, an RGB indication LED, two H-bridge drivers, a LiPo battery charger and a switch. All these circuits worked, but there were still a couple of issues with the overall design. Let's start with the first issue. I embarrassingly had a via moved over a pad with the track disconnected. I might have missed it because the coil had no net associated with it. I solved this issue by scraping the solder mask and shorting the track with solder. Problem number two. All the electronics were mounted on the flexible PCB without anything to protect them from bending and breaking the soldering joints. The third issue is related to the hinge. My plan was to solder the two pads together to fold the PCB in half. So both of these pads were supposed to be slotted, but I accidentally forgot to export their drill file. I punched a little hole in these pads to make them usable, but I was still not happy with the folding technique because the band radius was dangerously small. Keeping the pads unsoldered also wasn't an option because the coils would be too far away from the magnets to get attracted. So keeping all these problems in mind, I decided to start over. I started by redesigning the folding hinge. And after I was satisfied with that, I made sure that all my electronics was going to fit. And it actually didn't. So I also decided to make some changes to the circuit. I replaced the two H-bridge drivers with a new smaller device. And I also decided to remove the battery charger, because we can always charge the battery externally. To keep the electronics rigid, I added a stiffener on both sides, and this is how the final design looked like. I manufactured this board at PCBWay, and it looked totally slick. The first thing that I was curious about was obviously the folding hinge, and from a first impression it totally looked like things were going to work. Ok, so at this point Flexbot Mark II was ready for its first walking test. But that did not go entirely as planned. 
You see, all the three problems that I mentioned before were practically solved with this new design, but there was one important fact that I completely overlooked. If we take a look again at the paper bot, it stands still on label. Flexbot has a completely different behavior because it naturally wants to open up. And the force of this unfolding action was also overcoming the coil's magnetic field to attract the magnets. To try and solve this issue, I tried playing around with different battery positions, but this barely had any effect. So the only way to solve this problem is by somehow limiting the angle of the hinge. And you can only do that by either bringing the coil closer to the magnet or the magnet closer to the coil, e.g. by using larger magnets. I started by using some electrical tape to reduce the angle, and after a couple of tries Flexbot finally showed some sign of movement. But the tape wasn't that reliable, so instead I decided to put some glue on the hinge. And slowly it started moving. I control the speed by changing the coil's driving frequency. From this test we can basically conclude that the robot loves spinning around, and that's instability. So my next task was to try and understand why the robot was spinning around instead of moving forward. This may have happened because of multiple reasons, the two glue hinge sides may not be 100% the same, the robot's mass distribution could also be affecting, and if the magnets are not properly aligned at the center of the coil, they may be producing different forces. I first tried to fix this walking issue through software by driving the two coils with different duty cycles. This way we could kind of reduce the coil's magnetic field strength of the right leg, and stop the robot from rotating anti-clockwise. But it didn't work as I hoped because it basically made it stop. Just to make sure that the surface was not affecting, I also made a test on glass, but the results were not that much different. Then I decided to add tiny magnets to reduce the actuating distance. During this test I was testing different frequencies and duty cycles, and I think there was a slight improvement in the behavior, especially for the two extra magnet scenario. After seeing this test, I was convinced that the best way forward was to change these tiny cylindrical magnets to a bigger rectangular one. This way we would be free to reduce the actuating distance and also eliminate the magnet misalignment issue because with the rectangular magnet the whole area of the two coils would be covered. But this solution alone wasn't enough, so then I decided to make some changes related to this issue. I tested different battery positions, but during one of the tests I accidentally shorted the battery and it got all puffed up. I didn't have another battery that size, so instead I used a slightly heavier one. And after running the same test and putting the battery in the middle front part, the robot started going straight. Most of the time, because sometimes it deviated. But I still couldn't control the robot to turn left or right. And this is where I'm currently at. So can this concept be improved? I tried experimenting with some other random things. I first removed the glue from the hinge and added larger magnets. This way we should increase the magnetic field and also reduce the actuating distance. But this didn't work at all. So I then tried cutting part of the foldable hinge. But the robot would still tend to open up. I also left a PCB folded for a day or two, and the same thing happened. So I think to solve this issue we have to make the foldable hinge area thinner, which can be easily done by removing the top and bottom solder mask regions. To make the robot flappier we can also remove the stiffener of the coil's area, and instead of gluing the hinge you can also add a solder pad to connect the two sides together.
I'm quite sure that all these changes would improve the concept, but I'm not 100% sure whether it's worth it to make a Mark III version. Because I thought that this robot was going to work much better, and I also think that there are other flexible PCB robot concepts that could be much simpler than this solution. But I would still love to know what you think about this, especially about the changes I just mentioned. It might be better to add another coil and have three individual legs instead of two combined legs. It would sort of look like a miniaturized version of TARS, the robot from Interstellar. Before I end this, I would like to talk about Altium365 who sponsored this video. Altium is the software I used to design PCBs with, and they recently released a cool new platform. It's a cloud-based solution that allows you to easily design PCBs in groups by just sharing a link. Anyone that has this link can view every design change and leave his comments from any mobile device. If you want to learn more about this, you can check out the link I've put in the description. I'm still new with using this tool, so I'm currently watching their video series to learn how Altium365 can further improve my workflow. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching my progress developing this project. If you don't want to miss the next flexible PCB robot idea, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Bye bye!